Right, our country's got a current account deficit. Should we care? Well, to answer that question, we need to understand one, how has it been caused? And then we need to understand what are the consequences of it actually occurring. We need to look at the UK. The UK has had a current account deficit for like 30 years. The US has had a current account deficit for donkey's years as well. It doesn't really think, it doesn't really look like the government cares that much about it. Why? Well, let's understand. Why might a current account deficit be caused? Right. We could have demand side reasons, we could have supply side reasons. Now, we know the current account has got four sections to it. When we talk about deficits and surpluses, we tend to focus on trading goods and trading services. We focus on those two things. So, demand side reasons. Well, there might be strong domestic growth. That might be a reason why. There might be a recession overseas. And a country might have a strong exchange rate. Let's just explain all of these things and why they're demand side factors. So these all come, these all come from the demand side of the economy. So if there is strong domestic growth in the economy, it means that incomes are high, it means living standards are high, it means people are more willing to buy now imports because incomes are high, they're richer, they want to improve their material standards of living and basically they want more stuff and a lot of that stuff is not necessarily going to be made in the domestic economy a lot of that stuff needs to be imported for them to actually have it so that's likely uh, to increase imports and as imports increase um, the amount of money leaving the country increases worsening the current account position, potentially causing a deficit. If there is a recession overseas, it means incomes abroad are falling, so the demand for our exports is going to reduce. If the demand for exports fall, well that means the money generated, the revenue generated from exports is going to decrease. Again, worsening our current account, maybe causing a deficit. And if there is a strong exchange rate, right, strong exchange rate, right, that means imports are going to be cheaper and exports are going to be more expensive. I'm going to write this down now, in another video I explain this. But just think to yourself, right, spiced. If you want to understand what that means, watch my video on exchange rates to understand. I talk about the easiest way to understand exchange rates. So here, spiced, strong pound or strong currency makes imports cheap and exports dear. Dear just means expensive. So if exports are expensive, we're probably not going to export very much, right? And if that happens, the revenue we get from exports, the amount of money brought in, reduces. At the same time, imports are really cheap now. So we might import more, in which case the money we spend, the money leaving the country on imports actually increases. Which then again makes our current account position worse. So three demand side reasons. There are also supply side reasons which might cause it. So supply side reasons are all about basically the, the relative cost of our exports. Um, and how they're not really going to be competitive. And that might be because of low investment. That might be because of low productivity. It might be because of high relative inflation. It might be because of high unit labour costs. It might be because of poor quality of goods made. It might maybe reliability as well, so poor quality or poor reliability. Or it might be something as simple as a depletion of resources. Yeah. So numbers one, two, three, four, especially, five kind of, are all to do with the lack of competitiveness of domestic exports. So all of these things, the, other, the first four especially, make our exports less competitive to other countries. In which case, foreigners would rather buy from other countries. So these are all supply side reasons. Supply side because it's all about the price, all about the competitiveness of our exports. Uh, number six is very simple. This one applied to the UK actually. The UK was a big exporter of North Sea oil. When that oil reserve, when the oil actually depleted, when it reduced, it meant our exports fell. So if we are exporting a resource and we're very dependent on it, if that resource is depleted, our exports are going to reduce, we're going to lose revenue from exports. So these are all supply side reasons as well, which you need to understand. Uh, pretty much all of these apply to the UK, which is quite, uh, quite uh, terrible for the UK really. 
And to be honest with you, if you're evaluating, supply-side reasons are much more destructive than demand-side reasons because these can be long-term. That kind of answers the question as to why the UK has had such a, a deficit for such a long time. Mainly because it's been caused by supply-side factors and they are long-term and they're hard to rectify. Very hard to rectify. You can't just change productivity overnight. You can't change your unit labour costs overnight. These things are very hard to change. So bear that in mind. And what are the consequences then? So what are the problems with a current account deficit, if there are any? Well, the main problem, the main problem, is picture in your head. Aggregate demand, the equation, aggregate demand. If x minus m in aggregate demand, the end of the aggregate demand equation, if that's falling, aggregate demand is going to fall. So why is that bad for an economy? Well, there's the equation. So AD is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M. What we're saying is if there is a current account deficit, then this bracket must be negative. And if that's negative, AD therefore must be falling. So on a diagram, what's going on? Well, there's our aggregate supply. Aggregate demand, therefore, is shifting to the left. And what does that do? Well, that leads to a reduction in growth, doesn't it? And that's not a good thing. Yes, okay, we might see some benefit from a reduction in demand for inflation. But really, this consequence, this negative, outweighs any other benefit, really. A reduction in growth and at the same time an increase in unemployment. There is now less need for labour, there is less demand for labour, there is less demand for goods and services. So unemployment is likely to pick up as well. So reduction in growth and increase in unemployment, this is not good. AD shifts to the left as a result of X minus M decreasing as a result of a current account deficit. That's the major consequence there. But really, you can evaluate that. You can say, well, hang on a minute. Yeah, but it depends on the size of the deficit. If the deficit as a percentage of GDP is really small, then who cares? And that's what the UK governments and the US governments have argued, that their deficits are only a small percentage of GDP. So really, they don't have this much of an effect. Yeah, they might reduce aggregate demand, but they would say they reduce aggregate demand, I don't know, by maybe like this much. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. It's not having much of an impact on the economy at all. So who cares? Why should we be worried about it? Their argument. At the same time, a current account deficit might be an indicator of a strong growing economy. If it's caused by the demand side because of strong growth, then surely that's a good thing. That's a good consequence, actually, one might argue. So you can evaluate it that way. But you can also evaluate it and say, well, it really depends on where it's been caused. Is it a demand-side factor or supply-side factors that are causing it? Demand-side factors we're not so worried about. Supply-side factors can be deadly. They can be long-term. So that's another way you can evaluate it as well. All right? So bear that in mind. Another way to evaluate, well, we're assuming that it's going to be the trade, trading goods and trading services parts of the account that are causing the deficit. What if it's income? What if it's uh, transfers? that are pushing the current account into deficit. That's another way to evaluate. Maybe it's not our trading goods and trading services. Okay, so bear all that in mind. It's something that confuses a lot of students, but actually it's dead easy and quite fun, actually, when you get your head around it. Hope that helps. See you all next time. Thank you.